Are you tired of spending hours writing complicated animation scripts in Unity? Say goodbye to those days and say hello to Dootwin! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with Dootwin, compare it with Unity's built-in animation tools, discuss how Dootwin speed ups the process and demonstrate examples and advanced features it offers. So, let's begin! When it comes to animating game objects in Unity, there are two main approaches – using Unity's built-in animation system or creating them through scripting. Unity's built-in animation system allows developers to create game frame based animations for game objects, including translation, rotation and scaling. While this works well for character animation, it may not be the most efficient option for non-character animation. Let's highlight its disadvantages. Limited control. The system is suitable for simple animations, but creating complex sequences becomes challenging. Precise changes and runtime modifications are difficult to achieve. Not programmer friendly. The built in animation system is more suitable for artists or designers than programmers, making modification challenging and time consuming. Lack of flexibility. The system has limited flexibility, making it difficult to create custom or unique animations that don't follow a linear path or are affected by user input. Considering these drawbacks, it's worth exploring alternative methods of creating animation in Unity through the use of scripts. Scripting provides developers with greater control, flexibility, efficiency and precision in creating animations, making it a powerful tool in game and application development. However, it's worth noting that creating scripts for animations from scratch can also be a time-consuming process. But don't worry, there is a solution that can make your life easier. Do twin! This valuable asset should be in every Unity developer's toolbox, as it simplifies the animating process and saves your time. The Twin is a fantastic animation engine for Unity that enables you to create twins, sequences and animations effortlessly. It's user-friendly, incredibly flexible and perfect for all sorts of non-character animation, from basic twins to complex sequences. You'll be animating like a pro in no time. To kick things off with the Twin, download and import the plugin from the Unity CSS store. Once this done, open the Dootwin utility panel and hit that setup the twin button. No need to stress about those checkboxes for now, the default settings will do just fine. The plugin will automatically import all the necessary sub-packages into your project and voila, you're all set to start crafting your animations. Now, there are two ways to get jiggy with the twin, editor components or scripting. Each method has its pros and cons, which I'll showcase you with some examples. The twin animation component offers a simpler and more user-friendly approach, even though they still got some scripting magic going on behind the scenes. This approach is really useful when creating simple animations or when you want to quickly see results using the preview feature. Let me demonstrate the perks of this approach with a UI animation example. Here we have a screen with a button that opens a setting pop-up. But alas, it lacks any animation and looks quite dull. Fear not, we'll just end up with a sneezer pure animation. Select the pop-up game object and attach the Dootwin animation component. It might seem complex at first, but you'll get used to the visual interface quickly. Begin by choosing the animation type. The twin provides a wide range of twins, such as scale, rotate, fade and more. In our case, we need to select the move type. Additional parameter will then appear. Start by setting up the animation positions. The twin includes a vector parameter next to the two button. Adjust the X position to see the pop-up move from its initial position to the vector position you applied. However, we require the reverse movement, so click on the two button to modify its behavior. Now we'll apply the from position, causing the pop-up to move from the specified parameter position back to its initial position. Fantastic! Now drag the game object beyond the screen bounds to find the vector values. Copy the X position and paste it into the twin. Now you are all set to preview your first Dootwin animation. With Dootwin animation component, it's a breeze. Just hit the play button and the animation will begin. There you go, it works! To make the pop-up move faster, adjust the duration. Next, add the scale animation to the pop-up. The select uniform scale to configure each axis separately and find suitable values. Press play to see the results. If the animation seems too slow, reduce the duration and add some delay to synchronize scaling with movement. Press play all to run all animations together, it's looking good, but we can enhance it further by modifying the ease parameter. 
Animation is, is the smoothness of motion, it affects how fast or slow an object moves and how it accelerates or decelerates, making your animation look more natural and realistic. The Outback is paired perfectly with our pop-up appear animation, creating an engaging physical effect. If we deactivate the pop-up game object and test the animation, we find that it only plays once and doesn't repeat. Hmm. What's causing this? To resolve the issue, add the manager and select the pooling system preset. Lastly, disable autoplay and autokill, as the manager now controls the animation lifecycle. Awesome! Our pop-up appear animation is complete and looking great! I use this approach when I need to achieve quick results, but it might not be the best choice for a larger project that demands on more organization and control over animations. That's why I introduced this scripting approach, which developers tend to use more often. Picture this, a rowdy army of dancing orcs and a powerful mangonel launching pumpkin into them. Sounds like a fun and chaotic scene, right? Well, with the help of the twin components, you can bring this to life in your game. Our animation involves two actions, the movement of the mangonel arm and the projectile's trajectory movement. To set up the first action, we'll attach the pumpkin object as a child of the mangonil arm, so they move together. Next, we'll create a mangonil script that implements this animation using DoTwin. To activate the animation, we'll insert an update method that checks if the space key is pressed. If it is, the launch projectile method will be called. We'll also add a reference to the arm transform, so we can control it directly from the script. Now, we are ready to add the first Dutwin script that rotates our mangonil arm. We can invoke Dutwin methods directly from the components that should be animated. So we'll write arm, transform, do local rotate, to rotate the arm using its local rotation within the parent. The method takes two parameters, target rotation and duration, which will define a serialized field to have more control over them. Back in the editor, we'll select the arm and find good values for the final rotation style. We'll copy and paste the x-axis rotation to the mangonel component and change the duration to 0.4. Run the game in the editor and press the space button. Awesome! Notice, only one line of code and animations start working perfectly. Now, let's move on the second part which involves launching the pumpkin projectile. We'll need to create a second script called projectile that will contain the launch method. The launch method will need two parameters, a target point vector that will define the projectile's destination and a launch height that controls how high the projectile raises. To implement this in Mangonel script, we'll use another useful feature of the twin named delay call. This allows you to invoke an action with a specified delay. We'll add a launch delay serialized field and expression body method as a callback that will invoke the projectile launch function after the defined delay. We'll also create two additional serialized fields, a target point transform and a launch height. We'll take the position from our transform and pass it to the projectile's launch method as a vector parameter, and the launch height will be the second parameter. In Unity, we'll need to configure the values we added. First, we'll select the pumpkin game object and add the projectile component. Then, we'll link the projectile inside the mangonel script. Next, we'll create a target point game object and place it in the middle of the crowd. We'll link it to the mangonel component as the target point transform. Finally, we'll set the launch height to 10 and the delay to 0.2. Let's check if the animation is working. Unfortunately, it's not working yet because we haven't added any logic inside the launch projectile method. So, let's do that. First, we need to change the parent of the projectile so that we can move it separately from the mangonil arm. Once we've done that, we can finally add the animation part. The twin provides a great method called doJump that will move the object to the end value with a defined trajectory using the jump power parameter. The jump power parameter defines the height of the trajectory. To use doJump, we'll add the target point as an end value, the launch height as jump power and set the number of jumps to 1. We'll also add a separate field for the animation duration, so we can control the projectile speed directly from its component. Now, let's open Unity and check the results. Amazing! Our pumpkin launches right into the army. As you can see, doing animations with Dutwin is a quick process and you can achieve good results with a small amount of code. I'm super excited to share my first ever YouTube video with you. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Your support is highly appreciated and it will help me create more content for you. Cheers!